All right, so hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome to everybody here that's in person. So uh, another exciting week in the life of MISA. So last week, um, if you were with us, obviously you saw we had our um, inaugural MIS current student slash alumni panel, um, which was the first one we'd ever done. So it was kind of fun. So um, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, you can go over to the MISA website and you go on the events tab and we got the video right there and you can check everything out. So, um, so that's what we did last week. So we try to alternate kind of these company information session types and then our general meeting. So today we have a general meeting um, and we actually have our amazing career center liaison for the College of Business. So for those of you that don't know, each of our colleges have our own liaison or assigned person from the career center just for us. So even though you can go to the career center talk with anybody, you might as well talk to someone who's specialized just for our college. So um, that's who we have here. So I'll go ahead and pass it off to her. But before I do that, um, I want to go ahead and share the screen and get everything ready for her. So for those of you that need to sign in, obviously, if you're in person, we got the sign-in sheet in the back um, online. Uh, Tulsi will be helping us out and posting that in the chat. So feel free and sign in on that uh, link, and then you'll be good to go for the attendance. So without further ado, let me just share my screen. We're good. So let's go ahead and give a nice virtual and in-person round of applause for our amazing career center liaison. Yes, we do. Everyone, I'll do a quick pull down of my mask so y'all can see my face. <laughs> um, so now you know me. Um, <laughs> while I'm in, I have to ask y'all if y'all can please sign in again by scanning the QR code as best you can. Um, it might be. Um, this just helps Chris and to keep track of. Um, did it work? In the past, it kind of gets tricky. Desiree George, College of Business Liaison. As Professor Sweet said, every college has one, but I'm the College of Business one. So you could meet with anybody in the Career Center, but I'm kind of your main contact person. Um, so we're talking about preparing for the fair today. And the fair in question is the Technology and Engineering um, Career Fair that's coming up on Tuesday, February 22nd. And that fair is 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., with 11 to 3 being in person and 2 to 5 being virtual. You're welcome to attend both. Um, there's going to be some employers will only be in person. Some employers will be only virtual, and there'll be a few that'll be both. Um, so basically, attend everything. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just the other career fairs that we have or have had this semester. Those of you who are not um, familiar with the career fairs or career center, excuse me, we host career fairs every semester. And so we every semester, you'll have your internship and part-time job fair, your career expo, Careers and technology. Um, in the caption here. Um, later, but we also have virtual career expo. So if you don't quite see a company you like at this one, there's another company at the virtual career expo um, that you might want to talk to. Okay, so question. What is needed to ensure you feel prepared for a career? Resume, I like it. Let me make sure I get the chat back open. Okay. All right. What else? Pitch. Okay. Dress nicely. Uh, prior research on the company. Prior research on the company. This is why I love Lisa. What else? Anything else? Practicing, um, talking, reps, and interviews. Yes. So basically, I'm doing my whole presentation. So I'm doing anything else. But no, just kidding. I'm going to go into more depth. But y'all are absolutely correct. Um, but we're going to talk about preparing for an in person portion of the career fair as well as a virtual career fair.
Please <laughs> updated LinkedIn. <laughs> LinkedIn is all the is it all the rave or all the wave? Whatever the phrase is, that's what it is right now. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are getting hired on LinkedIn without even have to, having to apply for jobs. So that's not in this presentation, but yes, official LinkedIn. Send me back and I'll talk about that. Or come meet with me one. Um, all right. So career readiness skills. I know we're kind of maybe crunch for time, so I'm not going to ask you any more questions right now. But um, career readiness skills are the same thing as soft skills, if you've heard of those. Um, so seen right here, but these aren't the only eight um, that exist. Sometimes this moves. Okay, there it goes. Um, career skills. Career or career readiness skills, what we call them in the career center, because there's nothing soft about them. They are extremely important. Anytime you come into contact or connect with uh, an employer or recruiter or company, they're gauging your career readiness skills. Right? The things that help you really be a great employee, right? Not necessarily do your job well, but be a great overall employee. Think about going on an interview. Um, they behavioral questions. They're gauging your career skills. Like tell me about the time questions. They're trying to gauge your career skills. But like I said, at any point of contact with an employer, they're gauging that. So when career fair, they're going to be seeing how you communicate with them. Are you professional? Are you dressed professional? And so on. All right. They may even be looking for you to you know, these career um, these career skills or soft skills. That's also where the elevator pitch comes in. So the first thing to prepare for a career fair or just careers in general is to be aware of um, the a national organization says make a good employee, right? So the first step is to be aware of this. Where you fall in line with these, which ones are your strong suits, and also being aware which are not so strong, and you got. Really As David said, I think it was you that said research, right? No, somebody else said it. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, what was this? Um, the first step is to research participating organizations. So we move. Um, when you go to sign up for the career fair on Handshake, you can view all the employers that are going to be there. Uh, their description about their company, and you can even view for internships they're they're hiring for. Not all of them will list all of them, but most of them will. Right. Well, that's the first step of researching the organizations because you want to go into the fair entirely green. You want to go through this list and have at least I would say three employers that you know you're going to talk to and that you really want to work for them or really want to learn more about their their opportunities. So that's the first thing. Right, but then you want to do a little bit more about who and what that company is and what they do. Right, so not just what jobs they're hiring for or their general about description. What's their mission statement? Their value, their vision statement. Excuse me. Um, what type of resources do they offer? Do they have? Um, do they do like philanthropies or whatnot? All those things that you got to click around on the web. It's one, it's important for you. Or potentially working for. Um, so when you are talking to them and you're able to mention some stuff you saw on the website or ask questions about some things you saw on the website, they are going to immediately love that because you're they're seeing that that you're that you did your research, which kind of says that you're actually interested in this opportunity. Um, visit the company's website to learn more, but also use glassdoor.com. Um, that's a very popular one, and you can also use LinkedIn to research companies and the people in the company. That's the first part. You research your organizations, you know what opportunities you're interested in or who you what you want to aim for. The next step is to prepare your resume and cover letter. Show of hands who has their who has reviewed their resume and cover letter. Okay. 
Um, so you're still getting it prepared. I would encourage everybody, if you can, um, drop into the Career Center, or at the very least, take a look at the resources on our website um, to help yourself review and update that resume. There is an art to the resume, right? Even though it's just for a career fair and you're gonna be talking to a lot of people and giving that resume out, you still want to make sure that your resume, your resume is strategic and how it's ordered and how it's presented. Right? Y'all are MIS majors, but everybody is a marketing major when it comes to, res to resumes because your resume is a marketing job. Um, so I'll go over our hours later on, but again, if and that yet, try to drop by our office to get this resume reviewed. Like I said, it's very important. And make sure that you have copies, several copies of your resume, physical copies in the career fair. And then um, on the virtual portion of the career fair, you can actually upload your resume to the. But this is an example of the. Um, Resume sample we have on the website. If you notice on the last resume for every major at FAU, those are involved in the student organization. There's probably an example on there um, with how you can talk about this experience on your resume. But for you all, of course, you want to make sure your education is shown, your computer skills are shown, your relevant making sure that you have MISA on your resume. And a lot of employers are very familiar with MISA because you all are a very popular um, organization on campus. So um, they want to see your involvement in general, and then they definitely want to see your direct involvement. It's your elevator pitch. First, create one, and then practice one. So oh, David, you mentioned elevator picture practice, like I mentioned practicing, right? And then I think it was back there, you mentioned the elevator pitch. So either one of you, what's the purpose of the elevator pitch? That's essentially what the elevator pitch is. Um, Courtney online said you all can't hear me, so I'll try to stay close so you can. Um, so yes, very good descriptions of the elevator pitch uh, or the aim for the elevator pitch, but the purpose of it is to introduce yourself, right? It's called an elevator pitch because it's your short, concise feel about who you are and what you wanna do professionally if you happen to run into somebody on an elevator. Right, but we're talking about the career fair, so it's still an elevator pitch, but you still want to have it ready because you never know who you may run into. Right. When you go up to these employers, you don't want to just walk up to them and say, Hi, I'm Daniel. They're gonna just say, Okay, Daniel, what do you want? They're not gonna say that, <laughs> but that's they're gonna be like, Okay, so where's your elevator pitch? They're expecting you to come up with your spiel, right? Now, we have a suggested format for that elevator pitch. Start with your present, go into your past, and then speak to your future, right? So present, what are you currently doing? You all are current students at FAU majoring, getting your bachelor's or master's in MIS or whatever your degree title is, right? Do you also currently work somewhere? Are you currently involved in a leadership position on campus with MIS or whatever it may be, right? What's present about what's going, what do you have going on right now that relates to you potentially being an employee or intern of this company, right? Then you go into your past. What are some more things that you've done? Maybe you're not right now of MISA, but you were at some point. Maybe you held another job at some point that had some type of facilities to it, or even if it didn't have a tech aspect to it, just talk about your previous work experience, right? Work experience is relevant experience because it shows that you know how to be an employee, you know, you have some sort of transferable skills. So if you don't have relevant tech experience in this past portion, you can talk about McDonald's, talk about the communication skills or whatever, however you can relate it to it, right? Then you go into your future. 
what do you want to do with your MIS or whatever degree it is? What are your career and professional goals? What are you hoping to accomplish? Whether that be directly related to that company and that internship, or in general, the types of things you want to learn, but always keep it professional. Right? This isn't necessarily the time to talk about you being from or you being the, um, the, the eldest of four kids or liking to you know, take long walks on the beach. It's not, it's not that time, right? Mm -hmm. um, keep it professional, keep it short, and keep it concise for your elevator pitch. Now, as the conversation goes on, you, you want it to be natural and authentic. So you can talk about yourself if the conversation goes there, but in the beginning, start with professional and be intentional with it. One thing that I suggest for students especially for those targeted companies that you know you're interested in, in that elevator pitch with a direct question. Specifically, something about this that I saw on your website or whatever it may be, that makes them talk back to you. So this is an example, right? My name is Desiree. I'll be graduating in April um, 2022 with a major in management information system. My background, in, uh, background includes working. I had an internship with I don't know, somebody doing XYZ where I learned about how to work with Excel and these other things or in my class, I became certified in Excel and I worked on a project where I had to utilize XYZ system and software. And I'm also involved. I'm also um, <laughs> um, I also, I'm also involved with NISA and professionally, I want to go into cybersecurity and um, so I researched your company and found that you all have these different opportunities and I'd like to find out more about whatever. So that's the elevator pitch. Um, of course, you're gonna make it sound much better than I just did, uh -huh. but that's kind of your format. And if you need to screenshot this or take that screenshot, screenshot or take a picture of it, by all means, feel free to do so. Um, I'm not sure what to do about the tech issues, but we'll 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 clear that out later. Um, they're saying that they I'm cutting in and out. Close to the webcam. That's uh -huh. where the mic is. Yeah. Okay. I'm a conference speaker. Mm -hmm. so like, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your back too. I got your back. So. Whoa, all right. Okay, so um, rhetorical question, what is a virtual career fair? Virtual career fair is a career fair online. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's a, a science and a, a certain way that it's um, it looks. When you go to register for the career fair, it's probably gonna lead you to register for the um, Premier virtual platform, that's the name of it, right? So you're gonna have to register for career fair and that's gonna redirect you to register for the premier virtual platform. Um, this is where the career fair, the virtual career fair will be hosted. And in a couple slides, I'm gonna tell you, show you more, more of that and give you more of a visual. But the virtual career fair is obviously a little bit different than, excuse me, than an in-person career fair. God, I keep backing up, sorry. Um, you're not talking to people face to face. Okay. With the virtual career fair, you may not talk to a person face to face at all, but there is the potential to. So it starts off as a chat feature. Um, Y'all are probably way too young to remember AOL chats and stuff. So, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We got we got some people in here. All right, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
something like that. Think about, I can't even think of what to compare it to, but you're going on there and you're chatting people. Um, so you'll log in, you'll see their profile. Again, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, but it starts as a, a instant message chat. If the employer wants to though, they can video chat you. You can't video chat them, but they can video chat you. So the moral there is stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Right? We're gonna go over that more. Technology. I mean, I don't have to tell y'all, I don't, I would hope, but um, you gotta make sure that your technology is is good. So make sure you have a good internet connection. Um, I know these webcams, I have the same issue with my webcam in my office. So try to test that out. Um, make sure your video is good. Make sure you have a good camera angle. And you want to, um, you don't want the employer to be, if they do video chat you, you don't want them to necessarily be looking down at you or having to look up at you. You want it to be square, shoulders up, and as eye to eye as possible. Right. Um, Make sure your environment uh, looks good. You can add your personal touch to your background, but you want it to be as um, uncluttered as possible. Right? The purpose of the personal touch is to add that personal touch. They might see it and that can spark a conversation. Make sure that you have minimal background noise. So try to find somewhere on campus where there won't be a lot of people walking around or a lot of people talking in your background. The lighting is good. Typically, if you're if the light is if you're facing the light, that's the best lighting. Aware of nonverbal communication. Now, this goes for a virtual career fair, virtual career fairs or interviews, whatever it may be, but also in person. All right. So our body language tells a lot. One of the most important things when we're talking about virtual is eye contact versus camera contact. So all my people on Zoom right now, right now I'm making eye contact with you, but I'm not looking at you and I'm not looking down. Eye contact on a virtual platform means that you're looking directly at the camera lens. Camera contact means that you're looking, I'm looking down at you trying to look at your face, all right? So when you wanna mimic eye contact on a virtual platform, look at the camera lens as you're talking. Then when they begin talking, look, then you can look down at them. You want to make sure your posture is good. Try to minimize hand gestures. I talk with my hands, so I get it. But try to fold them, put them behind your back. So because it's extra distracting when, especially on a video, when all they're seeing is your shoulders and up. And then if they all if they see all this, it's super distracting. In person, it's not that bad, but um, try to minimize that. Remember to smile when you're speaking to people. That's in person and virtually, right? Smiling does a lot. One, it makes you seem less serious, right? It helps you out. Think about, like, if you ever think about when you smile, when you talk, you kind of relax a little bit. You kind of feel better about yourself too. So remember to smile. Just don't smile too much because it gets creepy then. Right? You got to have a back. Um, and... Let's see. Okay, this is on this one. Professional dress. Somebody mentioned this early as well. Like I said, if you stay ready, you never have to get ready. Um, so you never, even though it's virtual, you never know if you may have to stand up, right? Um, and even though you are a student, it's in the middle of campus at the in-person career fair, they will still expect you to look nice, right? Now, some, some companies may not care. Some companies wear jeans and shorts and all that to work, but you still want to dress decently at, at when you're at the career fair because this is kind of an interview, basically an interview. Right? Now, you don't have to have on a full suit, right? But shirt with a collar, um, decent pants, a belt, you know, uh, closed toe shoes, nothing too revealing. That's your, your, your standard. If you could wear it to... Um, a fraternity recruitment event or church or something else along those lines, it's good enough for the career fair, but you don't need a, a full suit, but you don't want to come in jeans and slides and sleeveless stuff and, and all that. Okay. A neckline, and if you can, make sure you have a fresh, um, you do your hair, get a fresh haircut or at least a, a lineup or something, line or trim your beard. If you have facial hair, just you know, make yourself look, look presentable. You also want to have minimal jewelry. So um, again, I have a lot of bracelets 
also why me talking with my hands in some situations may be distracting. Um, so ladies, this is mostly for y'all. If at the career fair, remove them or, you know, try to make sure you're not talking with your hands. Um, This is a quote that I know from Deion Sanders. That's not what this PowerPoint says. But if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you do good. It is true. See, we won't, we won't even need to see who they say that quote is from because it's from Deion. What? The point is, if you look a lot, pay good, and if you pay Precisely. Right? <laughs> and that applies. That was just like Deion said. Uh, but if you do all that and do good, you eat good, you pay, like, and, and y'all are going to tech, so there's plenty of tech, so you know, you gotta, you gotta look apart, look apart. So you have talked to the people at the fair, you've given them your elevator pitch, you've given them their resume that you came to the career center or you had somebody look over it, right? Now the fair and everything is over. When you're talking to these people, you wanna, oh, sorry y'all. You wanna make sure that you um, get their contact information because you want to follow up. Every time you talk to an employer, follow up. One, they're not gonna remember, they may not remember you. They talk to a lot of people at career fairs every day. So you wanna make sure that your name um, reminds them, but it also re reiterates your interests. This isn't an interview per se, but I know I've sat on interview panels or committees rather, where we've really liked the candidate, but that person didn't follow up. So we didn't follow up with them because we kind of just thought they weren't interested. Um, that's kind of, I mean, not ideal of course, but always follow up, right? It, it goes a long way to follow up. When you follow up, thank them for the meeting, reiterate your interest in the position, right? Let them know that you're applying um, to the opportunity and somewhere in there, try to add in something from your conversation, right? So if they, if you learned something from the company or they shared something really interesting or you shared something really interesting, just re-mention that. That'll also help, um, help jog their memory. And it'll again show that you were actually interested in the conversation, you were paying attention, all right? The other thing you can do on a follow-up or an interview uh, is if there was something that they asked you or that you like, you feel like you messed up on, right? When you're talking to them, hey, say in that thank you. Oh, I also, I, I, I um, gave more thought to the question you asked and here's my, the rest of my answer to it. Or here's, here's something else I thought of after we left, right? Or even if you didn't feel like you messed up, but you were really thinking about it and you want to add it, again, add that in. It shows your interest. Any? Well, I'll, I'll say questions for the end. All right. So that's the tips for preparing for the career fair. Do your research, resume, elevator pitch, dress appropriately, make sure your technology is good, and follow up. Right. So as I said, you will register for the virtual portion of the career fair on Premier Virtual. When you log in, it'll look like this. When you click on the event, it'll look like this. Not like that because it's not expo, but you, you get what I'm saying. You'll select the event that you're attending. This is technically backwards, right? So you'll look for um, technology and engineering fair. You go into the fair, this is how it will look. You're gonna see, um, well, for you all, you might see different sectors. Uh, either you're gonna see different sectors, it might say technology, it might say engineering, or since it's a niche fair, you might just see all the employer names, which it'll look like this, right? Um, you'll also see your student information booth. Those of you who have been here a while, you might know about it. Um, the student information booth, this time it may be me, my picture. Um, this is the career center. So we will be in the, somebody will be in the career fair to help you out as well. If you have questions or you wanna run something by your resume or whatever by, Know that student information booth is not an employer, it's us, the career center. You are hiring, but we're not hiring. Um, <laughs> um, but you'll see the rest of the employers there. All right, you click on the employer and this is how their booth might look. 
the organization bio, the opportunities and some of the programs and their social media if they add it. And then this is a chat now feature. They chat you or you may chat them first. Every chat that you pop up, that you enter, excuse me, is gonna show up on this list where this one says. So you won't lose a chat um, when you're in the but then go to another one and hop back and forth, right? And the message content will pop up in the white area. So that's Premier Virtual. Now I mentioned earlier, I was gonna talk about our, um, our hours and our services and whatnot. So basically anything career related, but we're really focusing for y'all on resumes and talking about elevator pitches and networking for the career fair. We're open Monday through Friday. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Walk-in appointments Monday through Friday, virtually 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So virtual walk-ins 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then in-person drop-ins 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. These all occur in the uh, main career, the main career center, which is in the Student Support Services or SC80, the building in between the Student Union and the new dorm, basically. And as the College of Business Liaison, because I love y'all so much, um, I also host drop-in or walk-in appointments, but I only host them on Wednesdays from 2 to 5 p.m. in the new Schmidt complex, new white building across the street, right? Only Wednesdays, 2 to 5 p.m. So if y'all want to drop by this Wednesday before the fair, whew, I say that and realize how that can go, but if y'all want to drop by before the fair, I am there to accept walk-ins. Um, you can try to schedule an appointment. I know, I know I don't have any I don't have any appointments before Thursday scheduled appointments, but I will have those drop-ins on Wednesday, or you could also drop in at the main career center. I am the liaison, but again, y'all can meet with anybody in the career center to help you go over this stuff. Um, our, we have our free professional clothes closet. So if you need the professional clothing for the fair, you can get ties, shirts, dresses, even maybe some shoes, accessories, all of that for the career fair. And it's free to you as an FAU student. You can schedule an appointment for this, but you can also just walk into our office. Over interview stream. Actually, I'm not. You want to practice your elevator pitch? <laughs> Just your elevator pitch or just interviewing, you can, without actually talking to a person, you can utilize interview stream. This is on the person to website. It's a self-paced virtual practice resource, virtual interview resource. Another opportunity for some super discounted professional clothes is the JCPenney suit up event. It's happening April 3rd in person at the Boynton Beach location. However, I know that's far for some people. Um, you can also shop online. And it's up to 60% off um, some professional clothes and other items. Yes, feel free to take a picture of this. You can also find the event in Handshake. Go on to Handshake, events, type in JCPenney, and you'll see the event come up and you can get the info. Oh, excuse me real quick. I have a question. Uh, I have a, sorry to interrupt. I have a golden ticket from a couple years ago. Can I use that at the JCPenney suit up event? No, I'm not even, I don't know if we're even doing that. I remember that, but I don't think we're doing that this year. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Good question. And follow us on social media. All right. I was about done, so it's okay. His question, his question is okay. So any questions about anything? I, we, I, I don't, but we do. Um, <laughs> yes, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. So we do also offer free professional headshots in the Career Center. Um, you can get you, that you have to schedule an appointment for. Go on the handshake, schedule that appointment. But we will also probably have our LinkedIn professional headshot booth at the Career Fair. Y'all, if you want, if you can't get to the Career Center before the 22nd, but you want a professional headshot, y'all can also come by the Accounting Career Fair next Thursday. The, 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 the it will also be there as well. So. 
Um, so they, at a career fair, they might ask you a behavioral question. If they do, our method is, oh, yeah, they might ask you a question because they're going to probably ask you about your experience. That's a behavioral question. Um, and you can use the STAR method. That's situation, task, action, result. Tell me what was going on. So I was, um, and I'm a co-webmaster of MISA and we had to plan an event. Um, I had to organize whatever for the event. So I went about doing X, Y, Z, and this is how the event turned out. So situation, task, action, result. You're welcome. Good question? I know I'm giving y'all a lot, and if you're anything like me, you're not gonna remember any of this. So I have my business cards up here. So if you want to email me to ask me questions or you forget when those drop-in hours are or how to schedule an appointment, y'all can email me. I love technology. That was, yeah, that was, that was interesting. No. So, yeah. So, um, last semester I prevented, I presented virtually in my office and in my office, uh, the timer, excuse me, the light was on a, a, a time sensor. The way my desk was situated, I wasn't in front of the sensor. So I used to have to wave my arm like every five minutes to get the lights to come back on. <laughs> and so it was, a we had, so they basically got a, 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 a prepare for the fair and a light show at the same time. Last time. <laughs> but no, they fixed it. I have a I have a dimmer now too. It's really fancy. Okay. Yes, she did. She did. She did give me a hack, and it yeah, temporarily. And then it I, the tape wasn't strong enough, I guess. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, well, yeah, if you have questions, you can write them in the chat for those on the Zoom or or you can come off of mute. I love questions, so. Yes. Okay. So oh, just going to go over all of our services. Um, deciding on a major or career. So I think y'all are decided on your major, but if you're trying to figure out what career path to go down, what industry you might want to do, how to go about that, we can help you with that. Developing job and internship search strategies. So if you don't know where to begin or how to go about finding opportunities, right? Um, resume cover letter, obviously, but also LinkedIn and Handshake profile. We will go through it with you and um, give you some tips and suggestions and how to not just how what to put on your profile, but how to maximize the use of LinkedIn. So, like I said earlier, LinkedIn is that's where it's at right now. Um, connecting you with employers via Handshake or off Handshake and through other events. Uh, planning and applying for a graduate and professional school. So, if you all want to go to grad school for those of you who aren't already there um, don't know how to go about it if you need your personal statement review we can help you with that preparing and practicing for interviews so we have the interview stream resource but you can also schedule a mock interview with us or whether it be just helping you with your elevator pitch um, and then also the professional headshots and attire when you go to schedule an appointment the categories don't say this on there so just Pick one and put what you need in the help report. How long does an appointment 
Uh, typically, yeah, 50 minutes to an hour, um, unless you ex uh, unless you select select an express option, which is 30 minutes. Um, for those of you that are graduating, you still have access to the Career Center for one year after you graduate for free. So a lot of students don't know that. So if you're graduating this semester, you can use us up until May of next year. And for that as well, but then you have to pay but for years free. So you always have access to Handshake as well. Like when you, when you get into it? Um, email me or schedule an appointment with somebody. We'll go from there. Were you trying to like? Yeah, yeah why well, start? Uh huh. What? Like a girl. Go ahead, sorry. Well, like I didn't actually know how the whole process goes. Uh huh. And how you have to make sure. No, oh, that's not that's not true um, per se. Internships are meant to be a supplement to your classes. Do you get an internship or anything? It doesn't have to line up with your class. Credits. Uh, oh, sorry, good. Okay, so the College of Business internship for credit class. Yeah. I am not entirely sure of all the specifics with that, but still email me and I can connect you with the people who can provide that to you. And hopefully we can get a response. Yeah. I have that I get. Got the information from my advisor, my yeah. advisor, like, hey, you gotta. Um, and the, since you're a grad student, um, your go to person might be um, Dan, who works with grad students. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not the name I got, so that'll probably explain a lot. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> all right. Well, always a pleasure. Like I said, my business cards are right up here. So feel free to email me. Well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so let me just stop the recording and then we get to do our group picture. Did okay. you guys think you were going to escape without a group picture? I don't think so. All right. So let's stop recording.